Okay, so we're getting ready to open up our Photoshop, and I noticed that sometimes when you open up Photoshop, it'll say this is the wrong type of document or wrong type of uh, file or something like that when you're using it. And I found that you get that error a lot less if you open up your uh, 3D uh, garment externally from Photoshop, like open it outside of Photoshop rather than open it inside Photoshop. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm just going to go into our project folder and I'm going to click on our shirt and Photoshop will open it uh, hopefully properly this way so we're just gonna wait for it to load up and then we're gonna jump into painting it sorry for drinking so loudly it's super hot today normally I'm like shivering like oh my god so cold <laughs> chattering while I'm doing tutorials now it's getting hot spring is definitely coming Okay, so if everything works out, you should see it open up like this. And I'm going to move it down here a little bit so you can see the workstation. So we have our t-shirt, and I'm going to show you a few controls to help you get on your way. Uh, when working with your, um, I'm going to turn it to essentials. So you guys have, or design. Definitely painting. Alright, painting. That's the one you want to work with. Okay, so I'm going to show you. So we now have the same screen, so make sure you pick it on pick painting because that makes it a lot easier. And we want to move and navigate here in uh, Photoshop. Now it may be tempting to use the 2D tool right here, the little arrow and try to move this around. But if you do that, you'll end up breaking your project file. I don't know if it's a glitch or that's just how it is because that's telling uh, Photoshop that this is a 2D image and then move it that way. You don't want that. You don't want to use that on your 3D layer. So I'm going to press Control V and uh, put it back. If you want to move it, you want to use these tools down here, the 3D navigation tools. So this is the 3D rotate tool, and that allows you to rotate your garment around. Um, you also have the 3D roll tool, which lets you slide it like so. Then we have the 3D slide tool, which you're not really going to use, so don't even bother clicking it. Uh, to zoom and move your camera about, you want to use the 3D rotate tool that lets you move it around so you can see the back and then the front and the unders and all that jazz. And uh, if you want to zoom in and out, you're going to use a 3D, what is this? No, 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 no. Zoom tool, and that allows you to zoom in really close or out close. Um, you can use the magnifying glass to make the workspace bigger if you want, but I just like to have it on actual pixels or fit screen. So uh, I'm just going to rotate it a little bit right here and then move it up straight because most of the time, not always, uh, Photoshop <laughs> rotates things crazy in their camera view so I like to get a true front and then press the little save disk here and then save it as my custom front. That way we can change the size when you go like left, top. Oh well, it's working. How oh, shocking! And always when I say it doesn't work, that's when it works. And when I go on a tutorial, I'll say it works, that's when it doesn't. So <laughs> you want to use those two and uh, play around. So I'm just gonna switch it back to front. Now, first thing we're gonna need to do is change our layers. So you're gonna go over here to the side the right hand side and see where it says layers and we're going to double click on the diffuse thing right here now it should save your shadow map into it when you go to upload it into Photoshop but if it doesn't you can just uh, drag your uh, Photoshop what did I think of your, your shading map that's the one for pants let me close this minimize this you can just uh, drag your shadow map into Photoshop and it should work too but it came in this time so we don't need to do that so this is a shadow map this is what we're going to be drawing on top of if you think it's too dark you can quickly lighten it up by going to image and then I think it's either auto contrast ugh, or uh, was it auto tone maybe gives you the same result there alright so we're going to do some fancy stuff we're going to do auto tone and then I like to go to blur and it's Gaussian blur and whew, this is really how I see every day without my glasses <laughs> and blur it up quite a bit just so that it's not uh, just so it's not so chalky 
but it looks fine when you start drawing on it so don't worry about it um, so once we have our base layer set down we're going to create a new layer pressing this little box next to the trash can and this is what we're going to draw onto it uh, to save time you can choose what color you want your shirt to be uh, here in a 2D so let's uh, grab this pretty uh, purple color and I'm going to make another put purple all over now you could just use the bucket tool and dump purple all over it like that but it's a little more satisfying when you use the paint tool and just go la 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 la, la and paint purple all over it um, so once you have it here you're going to use your layer blending tool and you can just drag your what's this thing called the scrolling part on your mouse down until it gets to a color that is satisfactory to you so whichever color you want uh, let's see I guess it's a little a lot of bright I like multiply but you can also play with the fill or something it really is up to you just playing with the layer settings and getting the result that you like you don't everything I say in this part isn't absolute so just play with it until you, it looks the way you like it so once it does roughly about this color uh, just to be safe how about we make it gray or so uh, blackish whoops wrong layer just make sure you're on the right layer which looks exactly how it was when we first started <sighs> whatever anyway we're gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna leave it on normal yeah anyway <laughs> uh, I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna leave it on normal and we're gonna go over to our kimono paint and you see that we now have our gray shirt now this is where your creation goes wild. You can start painting on it with your brushes. And as you see, you can just draw whatever. Um, I'm going to use my tablet real quick. Which has not been getting a lot of love as of late. So you can grab the red brush and you can draw swirlies on it. Or zigzags or whatever you want. Any graphic design. Um, if designing graphically isn't your bag and you want to write letters on there you can also do text so you can um, grab your text drag it oh, my computer is really laggy <laughs> so pardon the tool loading you can grab your text bar and I think I made this too small there we go and you can write whatever the the mighty ginkgo so you can write whatever you want on there you don't have to write the mighty ginkgo although I would appreciate you guys having some mighty ginkgo shirts <laughs> and you can change the color up here so you can make it whatever color you want have all the fun since it's ginkgo it's got to be green it's the rule <laughs> so I'm going to press play so once you have their shirt on there you have the font on where you want it you want to make sure that it's lined up exactly where you want it how you want it and you're going to press the paintbrush say yes paintbrush then click on it then it gives you the error say yes and then we're going to just push merge down and you'll see it snaps on to the t-shirt now if you want a graphic onto your shirt you can do the exact same thing so let me pause this real quick and grab a t-shirt graphic okay so I went to my computer and grabbed a few graphics out so you have two examples here you have one with a background so it's nice to plus you want to place this file say yes or place and then we have a transparent one which is our ginkgo logo so I'm gonna show you how to work one that's on a, tr a white background so it's fine um, okay so white background Photoshop has this wonderful tool called the magic eraser you can click on the layer it is say yes okay and then you can just click it and you can do it that way it may still give you some um, what you call it some white trim or whatever from the color that was there you can try increasing the tolerance 
and it may give you a smoother result so you're just playing with the tolerance and stuff like that and see what helps you out with that so once you have it as clean as you like you can just uh, put it where it belongs and then go to uh, free transform and um, you can scale it down to what you want so you can put the little Pokemon right here and then paintbrush and apply and then you do the same thing just merge down and you see it's added to your shirt uh, you can do the same thing with a transparent background oops it's hidden and you just free transform and you can scale it down or rotate it however you want it to be whoops scaled it a little too much there you go I want to be cheeky like really silly real quick we teach stuff. <laughs> um, scale it and make it. Yeah, I think it's good with the black. So we teach stuff. So this is our T-shirt for you guys, and I'm just going to make it a layer. Say okay, and then merge now. So when you go to double click on this, you'll see all the stuff we painted is right there on the texture. And I like to save textures for t-shirts that aren't supposed to have any transparency on them as JPEGs. Uh, you can save it as a ping if you want, but JPEGs are the business if you're going to make it um, non-transparent. So it saves some heartache. So I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to name this as shirt texture. Hit OK and that's it our shirt has been textured so that's a rundown on how to 3d paint in um, Photoshop so we're going to now export our shirt from blender and put it into Photoshop and then apply the texture and then that's it it's for making clothes really so let's go over there to our final videos and I'll see you guys back in blender